Let's talk a little bit about Sunrise and all of their music streaming everywhere in the world on all of the services. Um, this is pretty cool that the fact that there's, and it's not obviously every Sunrise track from every Sunrise anime ever, but I think that Cowboy Bebop, Escaflone, a handful of others now available on, you know, Amazon Music and Google Play and Apple Music. I'm actually kind of surprised that we no longer seem to be living in the era of exclusive streaming service, you know, contracts anymore, where it's on this platform, but none of the others. Well, I know um, just recently I bought, I can't remember what it was. It wasn't uh, the, the, uh, your contradiction by, by, was it K S U K E Kuske? Mm -hmm. I think, um, from God of high school. Mm -hmm. I found that on, on iTunes Japan, but there was something else I bought mm -hmm. that was readily available. Like the artist was entirely available, Japanese artist, entirely available on US iTunes. Mm -hmm. And it just mm -hmm. kind of was like, well, that's different. Cause usually like it took a year or better for it to sort of mm -hmm. filter down. Yeah. And it's like, so this was, and I don't think it was Isoken. It might've been Myth and Roid. Um, from the heroes overly powered and overly oh, cautious yeah. mm -hmm. uh, or is overpowered and over cautious that i think was available on itunes usa hmm. it's like that's really i mean that was yeah. just last season i mean that was mm -hmm. really quick yeah and i was just like well this this you know that's good it's a good sign you're recognizing the Absolutely. national market hooray thank mm -hmm. you <laughs> i know i'm i'm actually really liking this uh loving this because on spotify which uh, which i've been using uh you know, for quite a while now, mm. uh, there's so many things that I could not, when I put together a playlist. There are things that I just could not put together because it just wouldn't let me, uh, either it was a yeah. right issue or something like that. Like, for example, you can find, um, up until just now, Tank, uh, we were talking mm. about Tank earlier, yeah. uh, Yoko Kano's uh, Tank, and you could find it on there, but if you were trying to, to, to make a playlist, it wouldn't let you draw uh, the, from it. And now I'm like reading down the list of, of the, the Cowboy Bebop stuff on there. And I'm really happy about this because I'm really tired of spending like $40 on the CD. Mm -hmm. uh, like I did with the OST yeah. one. Then like a two weeks later after the con, go to like Goodwill because I want to get a lamp and I see it. An actual Japanese marketing in the cellophane, the whole nine yards mm -hmm. for $2. And eBay's for like, you know, what, like $50, $60 in that condition. Mm -hmm. And um, and it's just easier. And while I like doing Amazon and gang stuff, like that's how I got the uh, the uh, the Yoko Kano uh, soundtrack to the Sydney Sheldon um, radio play they did. Ooh, and, um, uh, Ooh something nice. midnight. I forget what that was, but uh, but now I think they're releasing that as well. Um, mm -hmm. And it's it's the Rooster Crows at midnight. Uh, actually, there's a Santa Claus song in there, and there's uh, yeah. And uh, and there's a uh, there's it, it not 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 Holly Jolly Santa. <laughs> it's the Holly uh, Jolly Christmas. It's, 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 uh. it's, it's kind of dark actually, um, <laughs> but uh, but it has one of my uh, favorite piano expositions of her mm. of hers, and I wish I could say it, but I think it's uh, she's called said, and I'm horribly mangling this. So if there's any Japanese speakers out there, I apologize. Um, Shando no ku no knife. Okay. And the album cover is, I think it's a, um, a P-38 going, it's a drawing, oh. a P-38 right across, going right across the water. Huh, interesting. Um, it's, it's a really, actually a beautiful album cover. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but the anyway, first thing I'm not sure where to say Shonen Knife, I'm like, that's a different <laughs> band. <laughs> that's a different band. <laughs> that's awesome. a different band. Yeah. We're yeah. awesome. Yeah. Um, um, uh, uh, what was it uh, Turtle Pot Cleaner song Minute 46 mm. gotta listen to it that's, that's a really good song of theirs Shut a Knife but anyway it's uh, it's really nice to have um, these choices now mm -hmm. and just have them available everywhere yeah. and and just being able to you know while I do like having things sometimes it's just nice to be able to go on Spotify and just go ah here it is oh, yeah well you. You know, just it, play it well and it's so hard on the side of the Pacific to know when you're getting a legit soundtrack and when you're getting a pirated one because you know it is trivial yeah. to duplicate any of those and i know i have there are soundtracks i bought for 15 20 bucks over here that was you know the exact japanese ones and i came home and i was like oh oh 
Like, oh yeah, <laughs> it looks it's identical. It is absolutely identical. But knowing the price differential, I'm like, oh okay, this is came from China, you know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, my Clonade soundtrack is uh, was was enough that I knew it was legit. <laughs> and then you know sort of same thing it's like you see the same thing and it's like a third the price you're like oh well i supported the industry right exactly I yeah, everything right. <laughs> i'm like oh god that um, hurt <laughs> yeah and it is so hard to find um it's been so hard to find this stuff that it's just been it, it's nice yeah. that it's just it's there oh, what what i find interesting about all this is that i'm trying to uh, one of the reasons why i, I want to take a look at a closer look at the, the particular the cowboy bebop stuff is that most of that is on moratorium in terms of actual creation of, of CDs and records and things like oh. that. So, so you know, some of that stuff you won't be able to find anyway. So it might only uh, be on streaming. Gotcha. So, right. But I don't know which ones. I don't know which ones of those on there. It, it, it might not be, but you know, that's something to look at. Which is even better for people who are real music lovers who mm. who, who like enjoy this kind of stuff. Yeah. Like um, you know, like. Old Lark and Cell stuff, like you know, if you're mm. a fan of that, if they're really old stuff, it's really hard to find because almost all of it's on moratorium. And maybe this might bring it back and bring it in, you know, some of those songs. In why is it on moratorium? Um, it can be uh, for for any reason. Um, press uh, this, uh, you know, re- now it will probably be on moratorium simply just because you know changing technologies, going from you know CD digital to streaming to you know whatever it will be the next thing. But usually when they do a press of like records, the same thing with vinyl. Um, after a certain point, they either want to create a uh, demand for an older mm-hmm. product mm-hmm. to help sell the newer product that's coming in. Mm-hmm. So it kind of is it's a price driver mm-hmm. sort of. And then some stuff is just so rare and that the, the printing was so limited that like particularly for vinyl, mm-hmm. um, that the actual um, press is broken or lost or oh, destroyed yeah. or things like that. Um, some of these people watching might be too young for Boston, but mm-hmm. when they were doing Boston has a particular sound to their guitars. It was almost sounds mm-hmm. like violence. Well, they the did. City? Exp- no, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, got me, got me, got me, got me. A lot of folks will uh, assume, yeah. Um, got me. Um, but it sound their their guitars sound like violins, and there's a specific uh, electronic way that they did that in the studio. Well, uh... to pr- to reproduce, be able to reproduce that sound, they put it at the time on tape, and there was a special magnetic, um, for want of a better word, goo that they mm. put on to the tape to keep the tape preserved. But that was the only thing they had. So when they went back, when Boston started making new albums again, mm. they had to go back and find us, find the old technology, put it all together. Mm-hmm. So it's just easier just to put on moratorium and say, forget about it, and hopefully have a digital archive of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, of, you know, something like, um, for example, OST1, actually, Cowboy Bebop, OST1 was on moratorium for about five years. Uh-huh. And then they started repressing. Mm-hmm. Repressing is interesting. Yeah, I know, um, I know Astro Boy had that problem because it um, they sent the masters like of the anime to NBC right. for for dubbing, and then by the time NBC sent it back, Mushi Productions went out of business. Um, mm. So they, it got shipped back to NBC. And NBC says we don't own this, we can't keep it, so they burned it. Um, and oh, yeah, ow, yeah. Ow, um, ow. my heart. I know, I know. It's really painful. My heart. Um, where where but, happened to successor and uh, right? You know what I mean? It's yeah, like you right. have somebody yeah. who's an agent for service. Yeah, no. Where the hell was that person? Oh. Talk to Osamu oh. Tezuka. He was not a business person. He was oh. he was not paying attention to this stuff. So there are episodes Jesus. of Astro Boy that only have an English dub. Because that's the only copy that still exists of that so. episode. You said this. Yeah. Oh my god. Um it's it's wow. kind of crazy. <laughs> Um, and, and, and NBC said, you know, we, we literally cannot keep this. It's not ours. Like we, mm. and of course this is back in the day of, of, um, uh, you know, the cell dip and all that stuff back in, in, in the, you know, the animation days of just, well, you just destroy it when you're done. Uh, uh, yeah, it's it's, both it's of us are just like no, it yeah. hurts. <laughs> oh. uh, and, and I mean, and, and it you can appreciate a lot of a lot of that, you know, when it comes to to uh, film history, to animation history, to architectural history. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? 
up until reasonably recently, probably, you know, within probably the last 80 to 100 years, hmm. only about that point did people say, you know, some things are actually worth kind of keeping around. Most mm-hmm. of the time, they just bulldoze yeah. things. It's like, oh, there's a bunch of these old wooden uh. cabins that are here at Valley Forge. <laughs> Nobody's used them for like 150 years. <laughs> just bulldoze them and we'll just, you know, make it a field. Be like, mm-hmm. ah, you know, no. <laughs> <laughs> Could we not? Yeah, can we, can we, is there an option to not do that? Yes, <laughs> exactly. You know, and the funny thing for NBC is like, if you don't own the, the content and you're thinking we need to, you know, keep space in our archives for the things that we're, you know, mm. natively making, why in the hell would you not have contacted the consulate in like LA? Mm. Be like, hi, well, we've uh, got all yeah. this stuff. This company went out of business. It's your guy's company, it, your country's company. Here you go. Apparently, Deal with this. Apparently they went through all the, the channels and nobody wanted it. That is ridiculous. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Somebody you know, needed, just, somebody like, needed to be like, slapped. That's just ridiculous. Friend, yeah, and man, exactly, Doctor Who. We, we need the candle. We need yeah. to go back. Yes. We need to light a candle. Exactly. Go back. Go back. Rewind and, history. And, and save it. Um, and save it. And actually, uh, um, I want to. Uh, well, didn't Doctor Who? Didn't they? They um, didn't they retape? Yeah. Over yeah. Existing yeah. media to I, save money, so mm-hmm. they were like they ran the episode, taped it out. And they were like, okay, good. Now let's rewind it and tape over again. Mm-hmm. So now we're, we're being wow. very cost efficient. Yep, exactly. Well, and that's the thing is that it, it's not really until maybe the 90s that you have the idea of television as anything other than a transient medium. You know, yeah. nobody, ex- nobody assumed you would rewatch episodes of G.I. Joe, the cartoon from the 1980s. That was going to run and then go away forever. Um, which is kind of yeah, great. that's the... VHSs uh, in the seventies were about the size of my bedroom here. Um, <laughs> they're, they're huge monsters, mm-hmm. and even the ones that were commercial, um, you know, those those guys were like you know thousands of dollars. Yeah, and you know, you know for you know, so yeah, nobody thought about doing that. And that was back when video rentals was mail order. <laughs> it's, it's kind of just odd and we're not um, talking about those kind of videos man oh i mean no, 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 yeah no yeah wrong p.o box in new york city <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but but no there's truth to that because um there was no box sets of you know miami vice in the 80s yeah. there was yeah. no box sets of, you know, yeah. nobody had that so why would you why would you keep that and it would just be amazing um, to figure out why some of these shows actually kept their stuff. Now, some of them, yeah. the, the really popular ones, obviously, it's it's understandable why they would that, why they would keep it. Mm-hmm. Um, and in early television, they would do the kinetic scope thing if they didn't have mm-hmm. tapes, which was yeah. you know, just put the camera in front of a TV <laughs> and air it, mm-hmm. you know. And um, but yeah, it's it's just all about the physical stuff and yeah. and and just wanting and having it. Wasn't there a um, just recently, like two or three years ago, out uh, out west? There was a um, it had movies, uh, original prints, original recordings of it was a big warehouse fire, and a lot of it burned, and it had mm. stuff like Nirvana's original, um, you oh, know, the, 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 yeah, the, and, and things like that. I'm hearing something about and, that. Wow, yeah, and it, that and it just burned, and nobody knew that this warehouse existed. For good reason obviously mm. but it just burned down and so much all that stuff is lost it's just like the kanto earthquake and yeah yeah you know the, mm. the, the 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 japanese films like I, I was watching something about uh samurai movies and they're showing uh black and whites mm. from wait with the original ones like the first ones and on film that was of course flammable because yeah. why not mm. put everyone in, in a room with the flammable silver thing. nitrate stock yep, yep. And um, but you know you just don't find that stuff anymore. It's just so frustrating just not being able to have it. Mm-hmm. Hence, why this is such a great thing that Sunrise is doing. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And actually, I want to thank you, Steve, for pointing me to Townsend's U- the YouTube channel. Oh yeah, um, yeah. Because I came across a video of theirs uh, this past week as I've been watching them obsessively, or him obsessively, um, <laughs> talking about ink. It's hard. Not... Oh no, kidding. Yes. Um, and the fact that the the best India inks of the of the the, the, the time literally burned the paper. Like it, it had it, you know, it literally etched the paper. That was that so it would be it permanent. Was caustic? It was yeah. 
um, oh, wow. which, which is which is fine, you know, and it, it, it sticks and, you know, you go out in the rain and your your letter still arrives and people can still read it. And then 200 years pass and you can read the both sides of the paper from either side because right. it's etched through both ways. Both ways. Oh. And so it's, it's literally eating away the paper <laughs> that it's printed on into our archive. So like... Crud! What do we do? Like this, oh, you know. Lock it in a nitrogen sealed case. Mm -hmm. Yep. Actually, so. this is where I put in my 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 weekly plug for libraries. Mm -hmm. uh, what libraries do? Is, is they take stuff like that and they actually do the digital photography yeah. of it, so that there there is a record of, of all thing. that good stuff. Mm -hmm. So it survives in some form. Yep. Yeah. There are folks now doing three um, D scans of uh, archaeological yep. sites. For that reason, because they're like, we need to document what this looks like right now in case an earthquake comes along, something happens, and destroys all of it. So we at yeah. least have a digital record. Yeah. Well, that's um, like all the all the archaeological discoveries right before World War Two. Yeah. That were in various various oh. museums across everywhere, and oh. it's like, boy, wouldn't it have been great if y'all had like at least comprehensively mm -hmm. photographed them because. They're all gone. <laughs> you know, it's like wow. things that are missing are probably in people's, you know, private collections somewhere or not at all. My favorite scene from Remains of the Day, um, which is a movie about set in a an English countryside house in the years leading up to World War II, looking at how the relationship between the staff and the Lord of the House and all that was sort of shifting. Um, and it's based on a, a, a real guy who tried to... Um, it said, who believed that um, World War II could be averted by just talking with the Nazis. Um, yeah. Uh, this is a, uh -huh. yeah. This is a, a common belief at the time. So there's a scene where the, the, he's invited several high-ranking Nazi officers to his house to have dinner and talk through things. And The Neville, Neville Chamberlain approach. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Um, and he, he leaves them in a room that's full of all this, um, you know, a waiting room. And they look at all this art. And one of them uh, goes up to this one painting and goes, hmm, that's lovely. Note that for later. Wait, that's not creepy. <laughs> yeah. And then they go in. It's like, that, mm, yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's the problem. Ugh, so much stuff yeah. that disappeared. Oh. Um, speaking yeah, of things, go disappear. through the yeah. go through the Louvre as a shopping experience <laughs> yeah. versus a <laughs> cultural experience. Yeah. I'll take one of those and one of those and two of those. Uh, yeah, bastards. So, speaking of things disappearing, uh, let's talk about Kinokuniya uh, in Australia and yeah. the fact that um, they have had to comply with a local re with a, a request from local. Um, uh, actually, I'm not sure what her role is. I should look that up. Um, but they she was... is. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Um... Um, she she is a uh, she's a congresswoman. She's part of the committee that oversees what the definitions are of what is um, harmful. Mm -hmm. They've got about three levels, three tiers of this, and um, she. Um, uh, so th just recently, there's been an argument about getting the the types of descriptors getting it mm. instead of vague you know narrowed down to what is it that you don't like that you don't want to have here in mm -hmm. australia and there's a and reason for that wrote, later. yeah and she wrote a letter to the vice president of of the company and it, which apparently is a, a bookseller that goes back to 1927. oh yeah they've been around for a long time yeah, yeah, yeah. they've been around for, for, for a long time and they have these in their stores were huge. So think like Borders time 10 mm -hmm. times 10 or, yeah. or Barnes and Noble's time 10. Is that like the thing that we yeah. saw Brent at Oticon at one bookstore uh, stall? I was certainly at Is that a, the same company. I think it was. Yes. I, th I think Kinokuniya yeah. had okay. a stall. Okay. They have a giant bookstore okay. in New York City to give you an idea of how big they are. Yes, because that's that's what you said when we went through that stall. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. okay. Yeah. Okay, I gotcha. So, so this, so the, they're what they're doing is 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 kind of 
kind of twofold. The letter that she wrote was that she goes, thank you for pulling these titles and mentioned the seven titles. And she goes, and what else are you doing across the world? Because you are international. So are you mm-hmm. pulling them off? And this is your chance to pull these things off as well. So they're not just doing aiming for Australia. They're trying to get oh, other people in. Oh, interesting. Act. So you might actually start seeing that. Here's the scary part. Hmm. Because our, our current... Um, it's very hard for me not to drop f bombs right about now. Um, our current, uh, our current um, administration um, is more closely in line with the the administration in Australia right now mm-hmm. than it has been in the past. And so, what the, what she has done is that she has basically said, "Thank you for doing this, but you know our friends around the world will not want to have those books either." So she's so you know just be wary of how that is going to happen here. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we're going to start seeing that in maybe not with this bookseller, but with other booksellers online or, or whatever. And, um, you know, she's pulling nice. out. The, it's the a nice poem. veiled threat. It, mm-hmm. it is. It is. And it just, uh, you know, obviously it ticked me off. Um, but, uh, she, she is, um, when they were having the conversation, it was the thing that I was listening to while, while you were doing, uh, the news. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and they were having this argument between the, the people on the council to determine what it, it's a censorship council is basically mm-hmm. what it is. And um, they're saying, well, what is it? Um, and she w- she refused basically to you know, mm-hmm. it, to to narrow the terms, mm-hmm. so that it makes it easy censor, censor, censorship more easy easy mm-hmm. for them in Australia. Mm-hmm. And while they're and what they chose is they thought they chose titles that everyone could go oh yeah see see Mm. see because in this one and so they're all they're they're all like that Mm. that's where they're heading and it's very dangerous because at that point you stop looking at it you know what they're doing now as a business is saying fine we're gonna make you happy pat you on the head we'll pull these titles because you asked us to nicely Mm -hmm. so we're gonna do it so they're gonna keep pressing you know Mm -hmm. you're talking about neville chamberlain earlier um this is this is what this is they're they're Mm -hmm. gonna keep plugging at it until they until you don't know what what it is that they think is so offensive until the point where it is well now we have purely australian so in other words i think it's part of just kind of a way of just keeping foreign things out mm, mm-hmm. and um you know that that could be me being a conspiracy theorist but um given how how uh, australia has been the past Five to eight years it's mm-hmm. that's kind of what it's looking like to me mm-hmm. but it's it's um yeah it's it's not good yeah not good do we know if they pulled the titles from if they pulled the titles from shelves or from sale that wasn't they clear in the article part, oh that and that was part of her letter actually hmm. um so they pulled it from shelves in Australia, he did not. Uh, the the vice president uh, did not say uh, if he had pulled it from online sales. My guess is that they would say no. They did not pull it from online sales, simply because that would be an easy toggle switch to go no, turn it off, right. and back on. I want to do that? Well, you know. So I think it's more. Like, I think the way they're looking at it is that it's more along the lines of, well, here's the physical thing because that's really how they're looking at it. Is here's the physical manga. Well, but what I'm wondering is, like, if I walked into that bookstore and asked for Aramanga Sensei Volume One, do they have it behind the counter, mm. just not on shelves? They're not. They're, no, they're not okay. selling it. Okay, gotcha. They're not selling. It. Gotcha. They're not selling. Yeah, they're, they're say, I, I would imagine if you've gone to to that degree, it's not going to be behind the, the, the counter. Mm-hmm. You don't well, want it sold. They don't want it sold. Period. Because that's what happened in Japan. Yeah. Is that they basically yeah. the, you know, the whole rigmarole was that it was going behind the counter. But still for sale, and all no. that. Um, no, they 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 want it off the shelf, off gotcha. the sale, off everything. Well, yeah. and one of the problems behind this, some of the context of this is, um, so, and I'm going to get the, the dates wrong on here, but um, I believe so. Um, uh, this is going to totally change the my settings for YouTube for content for this uh, video. Um, it's past ten. Well, yeah. Um, 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 Rent after dark is in full effect. <laughs> adult material involving underage characters was 
not illegal in Japan until like a few years ago. Um, like five, ten years ago. And the reason was they had a they had indecency, indecency laws. And it fell under indecency law. And there was no need to further define that. That was clearly indecent material, and so it got prosecuted under the indecency laws. But what happened was international human rights organizations started putting together lists of which countries in which children are safest. And we, what, are, what are the laws in all the countries around, you know, children and so forth. And the way they determined that was by looking at what laws were explicitly on the books around these things. And because Japan did not have a law specifically outlawing that thing by name, there was a huge thing about Japan being, you know, essentially a, um, a very unsafe country for children because that didn't show up as a flag. So Japan literally changed its laws so that they wouldn't have this bad reputation internationally. <clears throat> yeah, that's, it's all about context. And mm -hmm. that's why I think you see, you know, uh, what, what was it that, that, that you and I were talking about, JJ? The uh, uh, no game, no life. Yeah. I mean, they're, 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 why would you point it has anything inappropriate? Well, I think you were saying that too. Mm. And um, brother and sister who are very close, it doesn't close. revolve around them doing anything. Mm -hmm. I, I think it falls on the category of, of like, for them is that is it's, it's all about context. So mm -hmm. if you show the girl as adultish, mm -hmm. you know, adultish, even though she's 12, then for them, they'll say, oh, there you go. There you go. Something's going on here. Something, mm -hmm. something's that means card happen. captor Sakura is going down. Huh? <laughs> in in oh, fairness, really, you know, in fairness, card captor Sakura has the most inappropriate num number of inappropriate relationships like in all of anime and manga they don't go anywhere with any of them but that is you know you know preteens in love with teenagers in love with adults all over the yeah. place like i'm i'm impressed at how chaste clamp keeps that that storyline but but, I, but you know i mean that easily could fall on yeah, the gun absolutely they don't, don't know That's, and they want to keep uh, what what this uh, this congresswoman or whatever they're called mm. over there um, MP. wants is she Mem MP. member of parliament member mm -hmm. of parliament she wants it to keep it that was part of the argument was that she's not that's why she wants to keep it vague mm -hmm. so that these that so it's context mm -hmm. it's even though we know that uh, no game no no life no game is nothing like what they say it would be. Mm -hmm. It's about what are you able to sell saying, well, mm -hmm. you know, she kind of looks a little bit older than her age, so it's clearly something's going on. And it, it just kind of makes you want to, like, almost, even though it would really kind of be sabotaging yourself, though, you almost want to show her a copy of, like, Loveless and go, <laughs> you know, this is, I think this is what you're talking about. Well, not, not, <laughs> that's the not, thing. Not, not, not that. Is it uh, not, uh, if you wanted examples of inappropriate anime and manga, we can find that for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's plenty, but, that's not hard. Mm -hmm. but, but you know, but, but again, but, that, but then again, that would show, like, okay, here's where you're legitimate, here's where right. your concerns are, legitimate. Mm -hmm. and here's where you can start to draw the line where you can say, okay, this is why we think this is inappropriate, mm -hmm. yeah, and why you know, specifically, why this is. <laughs> I, a, a 12 year old boy should not be with a 23 year old man. I mean, that's, you know, yeah. it's just, you know, it's just, you know, the, the, that's okay um, to, to be upset about that, but it's not okay to and create a And it's one of role. these things, well, it's one of these things where you have, there's, there's full on absolute unconditional legitimacy in preventing any sort of child related exactly. anything that's going to bring horror um, exactly. to children. Mm -hmm. It's 100%. Mm -hmm. There's also, to the side of that, not detracting from, not an excuse to, but a parallel channel, is politicians love hot button topics, <laughs> and they yeah. love anything that helps them. And I don't care whether you're a member of parliament, a member of Congress, or whoever. Yeah. They love to have a cause celeb mm -hmm. because then they are doing something, you know, out there. They're doing something them. 
Exactly. Mm -hmm. And you, they can go back to the constituents and say, look what I have done. I've been out there this whole time on television. I've talked about all this stuff, and I've done a, I've made that difference out there in the world. And when you elect somebody in the next election, it's going to be me, right? <laughs> yep. But that, you're right. You're so right. I mean, I'm just remembering um, uh, Ice T's uh, album back in the day was actually a hardcore punk album. Mm. Um, and uh, not NWA. Not NWA. Not Ice T. Uh, it was um, Ice. Was that, yeah, no, no. It's Ice, ice Cube. It's, mm -hmm. Not Ice Cube. It's Ice T. Mm. Ice T. Uh -huh. And uh, and he. Um, did a, a song i think it was called cop killer right and typical oh, word okay yeah. yeah typical word seized on that and it, yep. and just ran on a whole thing and that's why you had the, the explicit like, lyrics, lyrics whatever yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. which yeah. turned actually into album covers it's, mm -hmm. i thought that was ironic but <laughs> yeah um yeah you got a point it, it is yeah politics mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so we'll keep an eye on it it'll, it'll be interesting um especially as America's views on that more closely match the Australian views on that as opposed to the Japanese views yeah. on that. Yeah. So seeing if that uh, has any effect. And, you know, we have had um, one American and one Canadian guy get arrested for importing manga that was inappropriate, shall we say. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. you know, it, it can happen. And, you know, that was inappropriate manga, but still, yeah. you know. Right. Um, Which, I mean, and again, importing, there are, you, you, with so many manga reading services, which obviously have come under a lot of scrutiny lately, and, sure. you know, they're, they're trying to get more legal channels for that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's the whack-a-mole game where, you know, yeah, you get yeah. one group that's illegal, and they decide to go legal, and they decide to do licensing, and 30 more pop up because we live in the internet age. Mm -hmm. So there's always, there's you can physically... Yeah, I mean, you can cut off the yeah. physicality of these things, but, you know, the rise of, of digital reading anyway mm -hmm. makes, you know, some degree the idea of physically going and buying that manga really old school. Yeah. Well, so, you know what I mean? So it's like, okay, we'll pull this off our shelves, but if it's available through a, a completely legit digital streaming, mm -hmm. it's, or, it's or a no some game. Yeah. Right. Um, I mean, I've heard arguments of saying that people get get uh, get caught on those things specifically because really, like of course we're going to arrest you on this because why are you even bothering? Like like this is this is clear like like just just why are you doing this? Just go online, dude. Come on. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's odd. Um, uh, speaking of merchandise, let's move on to a slightly happier topic: um, anime apparel, more anime stuff to buy. Woo! Yeah, look at Dean. Hey, there we go. I mean, go. stop. <laughs> it's past ten. We're we're cool, right? An occasional is fine. It's fine. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna drop f bombs. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. <laughs> well, just how are they going to like differentiate themselves from, let's see, the sixty billion Japanese purveyor of merch, mm -hmm. the three hundred trillion Chinese purveyors of merch? Yep. How how's E Moon? gonna do this i think you mean e-moon well, do you see my joke about they sell leather goods and it's e-moon yeah hey <laughs> i like it that's a cow I joke like it a lot right um they're gonna differentiate because they're going to offer scarves yeah all right. Which I did see the picture, and it was a scarf. Yeah, it's, it's the a, whole yeah. idie of a stole yeah, trying to like <laughs> ruin me totally. Very weird. A muffler. Um, it would have worked as a muffler. True. Um, Still, the character's dead or, on the end. Yeah. Um, well, I, I think here, here's the, here's the thing. Um, a, these are premium goods, so I think that's that's going to be different. The um, so like merino wool for the scarves. Those scarves are a hundred dollars each. What? Yeah, um, the backpacks are 130 on that. roughly. Yeah. Um, Jesus. I had so, thought yeah. about the REM backpack until I heard that. <laughs> oh, crap. Um, also, they are available in 79 countries and regions um, uh, through web stores and, and such. And, I think, and this is why we had that news story, I think, you know, what, a month or two ago, the Katakawa was opening that online store and there was like nothing there. Like, clearly, yeah. this is part of a big push. I think the idea is, look, 
Yes, you can go to a convention and buy that Naruto headband for $10. This is legit branded merchandise that you know if you're getting it, it is the real deal. You know, you know that this is actually going back to quote unquote support the industry in Japan, although the whole merchandising thing is murky. Um, They're going NFL. Right, exactly. It's that whole well, but, but I mean, here's the, the, I mean, the obvious funny part is like, you know, uh, Toei. You know, decides to come out with a, a series of tote bags. We'll just, you know, keep it you know, yeah, alliterative. Yeah. Toei's tote bags. You're buying it from Toei, so you feel like you're buying something that's supporting Toei. But what you're buying is a tote bag made in China. <laughs> right. So rather than cutting out the middleman mm-hmm. and buying it directly from China, you're mm-hmm. buying it from Toei, who's buying it from China. Mm-hmm. So, and and granted, some of that money will go to Toei. I mean, there's you yeah, know, there's, there's, but it's there's... Just still it's kind of funny. Yeah, it's like Toei could just license this out to some manufacturer in China and then walk away and be like, yeah, just cut us a check when you're done at the end of the month and mm-hmm. however much you sold. But well, instead, Toei's got their you know site set up in between, mm-hmm. you know, to be like, okay, now the Chinese manufacturer is running the Toei site to sell the Chinese manufactured goods that they are licensed from Toei to pay Toei. Uh, it's it's fascinating to me. I, I'm, you know, I, I I kind of wish we live in a world where everyone is be honest about all this, and you could just go on Alibaba, exactly, and just buy the stuff from the manufacturer, and some percentage of that cut goes back to the you know whatever company they they you know they license it from. Um, the problem there is, of course, you know, differentiating between the ones who licensed it and the ones who licensed it. Um, right. But yeah, it, it's it is amazing the, how the goosey bags and the Rolex <laughs> uh, watches. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, so yeah, it's 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 fascinating. Um, but I mean, they've got, um, uh, you know, a in, it, the thing is they can be pre-ordered until August fifth while stocks last, and will ship in October and November respectively. So these definitely sound like they're pretty high-end merch. Um, so a high thread count, high denier, denier mm, count. Or, yeah. Uh, all that good stuff. I, I, until someone posts a review about it, I wouldn't even guarantee that. <laughs> you know what I mean? What I would guarantee yeah. is like, okay, we're going to place a manufacturing order. Your minimum on your end is we have to have a 1,000 units. So we're going to order 1,000 yeah, right. units. Mm-hmm. And if they sell, we'll talk again. Mm-hmm. If they don't sell – it's been a limited run. We've charged 130 bucks, yeah. and yeah. it's done. Absolutely. So we will see. Um, Remains to be seen. Well, what interests me about this is that some years ago, I was at a an anime store in Seattle, um, and it was one of these little independent, you know, mom and pop essentially anime stores, and I was the only one in there. Uh, no surprise. Um, it was in a, a like a, a mall, and they had it was fairly small, um, but it had like. T-shirts, um, general merch, a few model kits, stuff like that. And I got yeah. to talking to the, the woman working there who happened to own the store. And I said – and I asked her basically, you know, how's business? And, you know, what? Wh- how do you decide what to carry? Because um, I was looking through her manga and I noticed that all of the manga was, you know, whatever it was at the time. The hugely popular titles at the time. Um, and I said, yeah, I'd I, I like to buy some, some of this manga from you, but, like – I already own whatever this is if I want to get it. Um, and, she, and she shook her head and said, here's the thing. Otaku will come in here and they will t- tell me, and talk to me about that amazing new Evangelion figurine that's like $100. Mm. And I'll order one and I'll oh, bring yeah. it in and they'll come in and they'll ooh and all over it and then they'll buy a keychain. Mm-hmm. And yeah. you, you go to cons, you know, how much, how many little, um, you know, Funko Pop dolls do you, how many, how many little, you know, uh, $5 things do you see? There may be some more expensive merchandise, but it's usually sitting up there, you know, for people to ooh and ah over. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I, I do wonder if anime hasn't kind of gotten stuck, um, at least in Japan, anime merchandise in this, in this state where, Nobody's willing to put out nicer merchandise because the average fan doesn't buy it. Yeah. 
Well, it does hurt a little bit when I buy like a Nendoroid and it's like $54. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> oh, that's a lot of money for a little hunk of plastic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, damn it. Or, and then you start getting up like the Figma figures and then yep. you start getting up to like the static figures that this, mm-hmm. it just gets exponentially more expensive. And it's like, you know, th- yeah, I've seen plenty of those at, at cons where you see it on that top shelf where you can't get to it. And it's like 150, 175 bucks for a static figure, mm-hmm. and you look at it and go, "Whoa, okay, I'll take the rubber keychain thingy <laughs> for like six dollars." Yep. Arico and 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 whatever the chibi dog thing is, I'll I'll, I'll take that. You know? <laughs> yeah, I'll take one of those. Mm-hmm. I'll, 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 I'll take that. Tall, little... The six foot tall Gundam made mm-hmm. model in the, in the in the plexiglass, and you know, everyone just kind of goes, uh, "Yeah." They, they, oh, I they, want. They had a like yeah. eight foot Voltron at yes. I think it was Otacon a couple years ago. That was oh, yes. oh. like like a disassemblable assemblable Voltron no, or just, just like, 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 like one one giant statue. And you saw a bunch of people. Like, people this is like a... seeing people walking by going <laughs> exactly yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> The big sign says "Don't touch" because there's fingerprints all over. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm gonna guess that's like the Rem figure, where it was like yeah. forty grand worth of like figure. But like, yeah, yeah. It, wow. it, it, it was not for sale. It was clearly like somebody built this as a, you know. Um, oh no, it's for sale. Well, that's it true. just that depends is, on how much is, money you've got. Very good point. Very good point. Well, it's not for say a uh, hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> Do you want me to? You want a bag with that? <laughs> Here, take take everything I have. <laughs> Remember that sword guy uh, at Otakon, and they would bring out the giant, giant oh yeah sword right. like that's it your out, friend it, Brent, isn't it? Out the like that was probably you know that's probably what you're talking about right there. It took him five minutes, so we're all just like, oh my god, it's so mm-hmm. great. Um, the 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 plastic throwing star thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. yeah, that's, that's, mm-hmm. that's what I can buy. That's yeah. what I can well, buy. that's what we had at um, and Brent, you know, in the back corner of Star City, the guy who brought his real swords, and mm-hmm. then he also had a bunch of like prepackaged uh, Chinese right. made, like Kirito's sword, Asuna's sword, mm-hmm. um, Gintama's sword, like all different, you know, prepackaged sort of stuff. Right. But he also had swords that he made, mm. and some of the little tontos and stuff they were handmade prices you know yep pretty you know mm. Mm -hmm. and he had one beautiful cherry rosewood handled Mm -hmm. just beautiful katana Mm -hmm. and i saw that i asked and he said that's handmade and i said oh and he said i'm not taking it down before you even even ask the question that took me 350 or 500 hours or a million mm-hmm. hours yeah. it's twenty thousand dollars and i'm like <laughs> i gotcha mm-hmm. yep. i think I'm, i think i'm gonna go over there and buy that rem pillow for 20 bucks <laughs> good luck on those sword sales <laughs> but here's where the sword sales go this is where the and and um and brent i think you've seen these guys man at arms mm-hmm. at, at at animore uh we worked with them at chesapeake uh shakespeare yeah. company and um, one of their guys used to do our fight choreographies for, uh, for some of the Shakespeare oh, cool. plays. But we also bought weapons from them. Mm. And, um, and there is, of course, you know. So you are weapons dealers. <laughs> yeah, mm. arms dealer. um, and there is, um, you know, of course, the, you know, the crappy China stuff and, and the stuff that they make for as props and things like that. And they are right. supposed to be what they are. But when you're talking about the actual weapons, um, they're real deal. We had to actually we have an armory, had an armory. Oh wow. Theater. And these are real swords. These are real things. These are real, mm. you know, they're like you, you, you pick it's not like when when you go to what the convention, you pick up a katana, you're going like this. You, you, yeah. you pick up a real katana, it's like uh, okay. <laughs> you know. Mm. No, it's actual heft and weight to it. Mm. So they actually sell those things as props to theaters mm-hmm. to 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 entertainment and stuff like that and they also do um they also actually do um a consignment um people who ask for it like they'll, they'll ask for oh, a okay. specific type yeah. of sword you know to to make and, and things like that and they'll and they'll actually go through the blacksmithing process and and 
and and go through all that and so some of that stuff is is really real we did um was it henry the fifth part one and there's a scene in there where there's um it's it's a spear going up against a small shield and a sword and a the, the two blades actually hit mm. yes yeah yep. and uh the 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 <clears throat> blades hit and it sparked wow and mm -hmm. that told us two things and that told us two things first of all that the blades are real they have heft and that's not something that you know uh prop blades do right. and the second thing was that one of the two guys that were doing it on stage screwed up because that's never supposed to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they go through a whole, like before every performance by law, they or by union, they have to, you know, go through the, the fight sequence before mm -hmm. each, right. each performance. So they know what they're doing, but that's where they make their money. They that's, and mm -hmm. those things are, are definitely not cheap. Um, uh, blades well, on commission. Blades on commission. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Commission. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Um, well, and that friend I of mine. I took it over. I'm like, can sign <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just that word starts with. Um, the only reason. Yeah. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say that that it's it's there. There is a definite market and actual yep. use for them, and and quite frankly, I, I think some of the people the the Naruto's at the convention could probably not have them. <laughs> no. Hey, look what I bought! No, 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 no. no please. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was uh, all fun until somebody lost a hand yeah <laughs> um and the reason my friend got into it is that he started fabricating stuff for his own cosplay and folks started coming up and saying that's awesome can i have one and he said it took me insane amount of hours i'd have to charge like you know a thousand dollars and they said okay good crowd <laughs> and he's like yeah. all righty then you know and he just kept you know Sure. going from that 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 you know he just kept getting now not everyone would do that obviously but he said every right. convention i go to i will find people people will come up to me and that is a reasonable amount for them whatever that that price tag is yeah um they, they probably know what they're getting and they they know yeah. what they're looking for and, exactly. and yeah, yeah and that's the thing is that you know, he, he does so perfect stuff so that yeah. that are their like youtube yeah. youtube billionaires like brent and they just <laughs> throw money around they're just making it rain oh yeah all subscriptions all those likes mm -hmm. Woo, that's just rolling it no. oh man yeah i should show you my stats i man I, I, mm. it's good to be the king yeah <laughs> One of my recent videos got 200 views. It was amazing. It was fantastic. Woo, yeah. <laughs> Not as much as Happy Cat has a has an app, but you know. <laughs> yeah, you know. It, it's, it's still pretty damn fine. Right. You know, I'm I'm struggling to put out quality content, and that happens. Um, speaking of quality content, and speaking of cute things, um, let's talk about Megumin. Oh hell yeah! <laughs> because you can now. Download Mega Man onto your phone. You've been able to do this for a while, actually. Um, but there's an app that puts... That specific app has been available or other, it has. other apps? Uh, this app oh. for a couple of weeks. Um, oh. uh, but it has not been available in English until this week. Uh, okay. Where you can download uh, a, an English... Uh, a pack that will, A, translate her Japanese into English in text, and B, allow it to understand English that you speak to it. Um, up until this point, it's been Japanese only. So it would understand konnichiwa, but not hello. Um, and so now you can actually interact with Mega Man. I wonder if this would help with Jap with your Japanese. It might, yeah. You know um, what I mean? Because that's uh, kind of cool, nice. Think. You could test out your Japanese with it. You can fiddle mm -hmm. around yeah. and see, what, see whether your pronunciation is yeah. right or whether the thing's like, what? <laughs> and you can program it to do, you know, alerts and all this stuff. Ohio <laughs> gozai imasu. Oh, God. Baka! Um... Uh, <laughs> okay, hold on, hold on. Oh God, <laughs> here we go. Konnichiwa. What did you say? I couldn't see. <laughs> ah, I was say I, I, somebody's desk card. She, yeah. she asked you a question. Let me let me see. Um, does it have like a? No, it doesn't have a um, menu of what I of past things. 
Um, See, there's here's where we need Kira to come in and yeah. tell us what oh. the heck she's saying. <laughs> Kira, are you out there? I'm I'm going to sleep. So I, oh. just, I just told her I'm going to sleep. And she goes to sleep. And she goes to sleep. And now. Now she's awake. And I've I've now woken up. Um, Interesting. Dismiss. So yeah, uh, this is a thing that exists. Um, it's funky. But so the, the the news story this week is that besides the the English language, they now have events. So she's going to be in a bathing suit because why wouldn't you want that? Um, of course. So they've got this thing Australia. with yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, mm, um, here we go. Now that's going to get banned in Australia. Mm, <laughs> if it hasn't already. Um, so let's see here. Um, it's Sky event. Um, you, there are limited edition conversations in the summer. Um, so Megumin will now respond to phrases like summer and watermelon. Um, and there are other limited edition conversations that you have to find on your own. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and should respond to summer and watermelon. Oh, what the oh. hell kind of conversation is that? You say no. if you say watermelon, um, then she dances. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. um, there you go. Now it should be pointed out: the swimwear is not free. Why are we Madden. surprised? Um, it is microtransactions. Hooray! Oh yes, um, it is eight hundred and sixty yen for the swimwear outfit, uniform. Excuse me, uniform, not outfit. Um, and then it's almost the, ten, ten bucks for yeah. an outfit. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Damn. Well, the the English pack was I think six bucks. Um, to get the uh... yeah, but the English pack that's I mean that's a thing. Yeah, first is like that took work. just putting her in a different outfit for ten dollars. But it's Dude. a swimwear ah. outfit. I don't care if it's a kuma bear outfit for ten dollars. <laughs> Screw that. <laughs> you know that's that's mm -hmm. just that's that's highway <laughs> robbery right there. Mm -hmm. Wait until you see her. Uh, well, wait until Rem shows up. Don't say that. Because <laughs> then I'm going to spend that $10. Mm -hmm. just, oh, it's terrible. Well, this is the other no, interesting I, thing. Go ahead. Yep. I, I can't imagine. I, you know, it's it's neat. It's, it's a cute kind of concept, but I, I'm not sure the longevity of that. You know, it's like the, the novelty of it is going to really burn out pretty quickly. Having her as an alarm, that's kind of, you know, that's okay. Mm -hmm. That's a funky thing. Oh dear! <laughs> it's certainly cute, but mm -hmm. again, you know, it's like the novelty of just seeing that all the time. It's like, eh, okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, there are a lot of outfits. I, I can buy a lot this. of cheeseburgers for ten dollars. So you can get Mega Man in pajamas, a birthday dress, a Valentine's Day apron, um, school uniform. Oh wait a minute! No, no, no! Hold on, apron? Yes. I will, I'm, I'm assuming that's a, not I'm just assuming apron, that's an inference not to the just an apron. Uh, I don't know if they don't say specifically. I'm, well, I'm, that, I'm that loading it right now. Right. I'm loading it right now, so we can we can verify. Oh yeah, it's. it's, it's oh okay. It's so she's. It's fine. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. That's, true. that's pretty reasonable. <laughs> I was um, to say every anime ever has yeah. told me that an apron is a special type of it's thing. Uh, um. <laughs> So yeah, you can, you can you can get all those things, and they range in price for those curious, from about five dollars and fifty cents to about eight dollars. Um, the birthday dress is pretty cute. Why does she have an eye patch? She always has an eye patch. She doesn't in some of these other things. So I gotta admit, birthday dress she looks awesome. Like, that's very nice. Kind of a cool like, gothy thing going yeah, on yeah, there. Yeah. Goth Lily thing. Um, she remind that reminds me of Rory Mercury from Gate. Oh, mm, yeah. You know what I mean? The black, yeah. the black and red. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but no eye patch there. Oh, that's weird. Because usually yeah. she has the eye patch yeah. with cross on it. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> so I think Gate. Oh my god. Uh, imagine hearing that at like two o'clock. It's your alarm. God, the monster <laughs> <laughs> killed me. Or, or, or you're at work and, and it suddenly goes, oh, lunch. And everyone's just like, what? <laughs> Are you ready for Go lunch? Go to <laughs> Is your phone speaking Japanese and laughing? Yes, it is. <laughs> it's a special phone. Go away. Mm, exactly. Yes. <laughs> I, want, I wonder how much this is going to generate. 
Oh, a fair amount. Let's be honest. You know, that I, I, <laughs> mm. that I'd love to see what like the stats are on this. Like how many people mm-hmm. are just going to keep throwing ridiculous amounts of money at this to get the party outfit to get the da 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 You know what I mean? It's like so you're going to have somebody who's going to be a hikikomori that's sitting at home, and they're going to like get the app and then spend five thousand dollars on every outfit that it possibly Mega Man could wear. Look at Fortnite. You know. Every in-app purchase on Fortnite has nothing to do with game performance, and they make money hand over fist in that game. Yeah. Yes, they do. <laughs> and there's there's the wow. the uh, effect that booze has, much like on iTunes. True. <laughs> yes. <laughs> in the morning. I want all of you. Happy <laughs> birthday. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, you know Very that's 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 why the the age of the internet is so glorious for e-commerce. <laughs> the fact that people can sit at home plowing out of their minds and start buying things randomly on Amazon and other various sites across the planet. Mm-hmm. It's it's fascinating yeah, yeah. to me though. Special moment, like, special moment when you open up the box and you go, "Oh, hey, wait, what? <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> so, 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 Steve, you just totally." forego the reading the confirmation email the next morning going what the <laughs> hell did i order <laughs> i'll probably be so, it will probably that's be like the this. one that usually it, gets yeah, me is, is like what the hell did i do that for no this will probably be like oh, oh it hurts too much okay, i'll look at it <laughs> can later I, can i still cancel the like 27 pack of like Fuel cubes for a stove <laughs> that I don't have. I got to hit the cancel button. What the hell's happening? It seemed like such a good idea at the time. Forty thousand dollar REM statue with a parasol. <laughs> cancel. Just cancel. Why did my credit card? I, I would love to see them, I, would, I would love to see the delivery man bring that up. Yes. My, uh, Mm-hmm. I mean, she well, had yeah, a foot crate. She had a foot crate. Go, just like look out the door, just go. So that's what you're about. <laughs> right? Exactly. I mean, she has to be in a wooden crate. I mean, there's no oh, way yeah. in hell you put her, you put her in like a heavy cardboard with popcorn. <laughs> she's she's got to be like boxed in a heavy wooden crate. There's yeah, yeah. Just no other way. Oh yeah, no, they said that. Well, like the parasol. That almost makes it worse if you were to open it up and your door was open and your neighbor walks by <laughs> and you pull the crate off and the and the packaging comes out and the first thing you see is like a humanoid figure. You're like, wait, what? <laughs> legs, just legs sticking up, just legs, right? <laughs> yeah, sticking out of popcorn, a little pair of sandals and feet. <laughs> You just turn around, just kind of experiments. It's a Japanese girl. No, wait, no, no, wait. That doesn't, that doesn't make it better. Wait, wait. <laughs> see, and, and this is where I'm sure people in the chat box, and there's there's probably somebody out there right now who's thinking the same thought I am, that you turn to your neighbor and you go, mail order bride? Let's <laughs> <laughs> just, just see how your neighbor just goes, oh, oh I got to go. <laughs> like, ah. I'm feeling very uncomfortable right now. I'm <laughs> That would be funny as hell, though. It would. <laughs> uh, I wonder how many life-size anime characters have been made. Obviously not for, you know, public consumption. Wow. But I've, I've seen that kind of thing around. You know, this store has, you know, they, they made up. Maybe they took a mannequin or something and, you know, made it to look like this right. character. Hmm. I wonder. Well, I was going to say, I know... Uh... Remember the Warner Brothers stores? Oh, yeah. They had the big Bugs Bunnies, Daffy yeah, Dogs, Pig, yeah. you know, Porky Pig and all the rest yeah. of them. So it's like, you know, that was at least a run for a chain of stores mm-hmm. so that the molds were, you know, worth the time and effort to create. It's like, I would imagine that if there were SAO stores, mm-hmm. 300, 400 oh, SAO wow. stores, you probably would have, I don't know, you know, maybe REM would be like five or six hundred bucks mm-hmm. because they would run so many of them that the mold would be practical. No. There but are a for, lot. For that specific kind of thing, I would think it would be very expensive to have humanoid figures. I'm, I'm surprised. I'm Googling it now, and there are a lot. Now, there was a whole um, – so there's a Tolevru figurine. There's a Miku. Um, Is it Lala? Um, it is, uh, one second. Momo, um, Nana. 
Um, maybe it's not Two Love Roo. One second. Um, Can you tell I know a lot about Two Love Roo? <laughs> um, Lala. It's Lala. Aha! Yeah. Lala, the princess of Devil, Devil Luke. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I see. There and where is this are... available? <laughs> <laughs> um, shh, shh. Later, there, later. There's another Rem. Another Rem? Yep. Um, actually, both of them. Uh, Rem and... Apologies. Um, uh, Ram? Rem and Ram. Um... 149, 154 uniform? centimeters tall, and they made, made uniforms. Um, uh, Rem's got a broom. These can't be life size. One second. Um, I was going to say the Figma figures are like eighty-five, ninety dollars a sh just a shot by themselves. Yeah. So yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. I mean, um, a full size figure I think would well, be actually, still like a thousand bucks. Oh yeah, I mean, and these well, are more than more than a thousand. Yeah, these are not for sale. These are like made for an exhibition. Um, oh. Um, um, Ayase for my little sister. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. um, oh, Kana from Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. Ha! Huh, even some, oh, uh, wow. even the, um, uh, one of the girls from Nanon Biori, the, the little, you know, pigtail girl. They have one of the hers. Renge? Yeah, Renge. I assume so. Uh, yep, yeah, Renge. Renge. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's the thing. The, now this is the, that's the Renge and Kanachan. Mm. That's a little creepy. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? It's like I, I undisputably hands down, they're both awesome. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's like I would, I would feel funny about a ordering it, and then yep. b anybody seeing it be like, oh, why'd you buy the little tiny girl? Yeah, and be like, very, oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. And again, these are not for sale. They're just made for an, for an event. But you could buy a uh, Megumi Kato from Saikano. Um, okay. How to raise size. a boring girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, they made 10 of them. And they were uh, $25,000 a piece. Oh, a bargain. Yeah. <laughs> you know, not, not too bad. Why do they keep choosing Megumi? You have Erica, Ari, Ari Sawamura, and uh, the other girl, the dark-haired girl. I can't remember her name. Mm. Dang it. Oh. Um, but you know what I mean? Mm. It's like you have other people than Megumi, and, and she's not not, a, not that she's a bad character, but mm -hmm. she's just not as energetically exciting as the other two characters. Mm -hmm. You know. So well, it's like, it's I mean, if you want a really fun character to have, you know, hanging around, you could have a life-size Menma. What? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What? It, no, repeat that again, because hey, yeah, like oh, it, I'm, it, sorry, um, blanked out for a split okay. second, and there was nothing. To, your mouth is moving. <laughs> and nothing. Um, if you really, I was wanted... gonna, I was gonna dub in there. You, I fought your grandfather for the last <laughs> time. Now let's reflect you and fight the bear. Okay, cool. If you really wanted to feel good, you could have a life-size Menma. A life-size who? Menma from Anohana. Oh. No. Yeah. No. Just live. No. Just, just in your house forever. No. <laughs> wow. Boy, wouldn't that be just great to wake up to a cry every day? <laughs> exactly. Yes. <laughs> um, Why don't I just get a Nagisa and Yushio like <laughs> figures to sit next to my bed so I could cry hysterically every time I get out of bed? <laughs> like. <Yep. laughs> Ooh. Yeah. So, oh. so there's a there's this uh, village in Japan called Nagaro. It's the village of dolls. Oh yes, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so what's probably going to happen now? Now that we know that these all these life size figurines are going to be out there, there's going to be some town somewhere where it's all going to be <laughs> all these figurines. Mm -hmm. you know, instead of the dolls, there'll just be one big village. You know, of, village of, of figurines. figurines. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Um, that actually someone would probably will pay a mission. Someone yeah, will and that's what I was gonna say. The, yeah. the village of dolls, because they're all handmade, they're all right. kind of slightly creepy. Oh. Well, not even slightly. Mm -hmm. slightly. They're mm -hmm. really hey. creepy. So if you yeah. had an entire village of like high-end, really great quality, like master-crafted figures, mm -hmm. that'd be awesome to like see like a yeah. a schoolhouse, like an elementary grade schoolhouse that has Kanachan and Renge. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, your yeah. middle school has, like, some of the other figures in high school and then, like, totally. like a technical college kind of thing. 
Oh, that'd be kind of cool. Yeah, I'd, I'd go. Just for the hell of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, take your photo with them. Well, that's the the big thing with the uh, anime tourism, right? So you'll go to a site that was featured in an anime series, and they'll have a life size cardboard cut out of the of the characters there, so you can take yep. their pictures with them. Um, so I actually just came across an article which which totally explains this. Um, there is a uh, um, an exhibition called Wonder Festival, Wonder Fest. Um, just an exhibition of anime, video game, and other two D character models. So this is basically where you know the exhibitors come out to show their stuff. And how do you showcase how amazing your figures are, other than commissioning a life size one to sit at your booth at Wonderfest? So that's where a lot of these come from, as essentially wow. you know there to prove wow. the the you know how amazing your company is. There's now this I would buy, although I could never afford it. Um, they have the three goddesses from Oh My Goddess. Um, it, as life size, school, um, Bell Dandy, and Erd. Um, Bell Dandy. In, in these beautiful flowing oh, wow. dresses, and it's gorgeous. Because um, um, wow. that's, that's just. It's only $200 million. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I, I actually want to see if I can find. So they. Yeah, I, so I found the image. But well, I'm the good curious. news is, if you buy Bell Dandy, then you can also just like put some regular street clothes on her. It could be Love Hina. There we go. Pretty oh, much. It's yeah. twice the value. <laughs> um, yeah, it looks like these were just for Wonderfest. Um, double checking. Where did now. they go? Oh, then? cool. Well, it's like Don so much, like a Toy Story type of movie based on these things. Once mm. they're retired, yeah, you know, they're they're it happens to them. There was a Star Trek. Uh, Star Trek. God, sorry, Twilight Zone episode of a lady that goes into a department store oh right remember that yes yeah it's a life of mannequins it's it's uh, it's, uh old, it's i don't know whether what it, whether it was early twilight mm -hmm. zone or latter in the run of the twilight zone series but a woman goes into uh, a department store to buy i think she was like buying gloves mm -hmm. and like people are just kind of very oddly reacting to her and then like they suggest that she go to the top floor to like do her glove exchange mm -hmm. and she goes up and the top floor is like a completely unused like sort of, sort of like you know uh storagey kind of area a lot of covered displays and everything else mm -hmm. and a lot I... of covered mannequins and she can't get the elevator back down and she hears voices oh. she hears talking like where have you been mm -hmm. what have you been doing mm -hmm. and you eventually you know it's not a spoiler because that Twilight Zone was released like 50 <laughs> years ago. Years so ago. there you go. Yeah. It's out there already. Um, you find out it's the the store mannequins. They are alive for a period of time, oh. and they select one of their own by rotation to go out and to live like people. And mm. at the end of your rotation, you're supposed to return. And she 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 tarried too long. Mm-hmm. And so they had to get her back in there to allow someone else to go out to share yeah. the experience. Yeah, it was a it was a freaky episode, <laughs> a neat concept, and it was a freaky Lord. freaking episode. If you want an amazing sort of mini um, lesson mini? on um, uh, on writing, uh, I hope it's still available on YouTube. Uh, Rod Serling actually recorded uh, a bunch of sessions of him sitting down with the students in a writing class that he taught. Oh, wow. And yeah, wow. and he basically sits down and has them asking him questions about writing, about television and so forth and his approach and so forth. And he explains what he did and all that. And they're, they were all, and it's all black and white, obviously. Uh, and this is right. after Twilight Zone before, um, what was the next one he did? Um, uh, the painting theme one, I forget. Uh, oh, uh, uh, dark port. No portrait. No, what is uh, in, it? Um, um, dark gallery. Is it dark? Something gallery? like this. Yeah, yeah, something gallery. Um, yeah. Um, Rod yeah, no. I Need to check that out. Yeah, it, it's it's night gallery. Night gallery. Night gallery. Night gallery. I, yeah. mm -hmm. I got the gallery part <laughs> exactly, right. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> um, he tells a great story, which I won't spoil here, about um, censorship actually about you know what happens when a sponsor comes and asks you to change something in a script yeah how do you respond and he talks about his approach to that 
Interesting. Oh. Yeah. Um, so when Pizza Hut comes up when you're making Steins Gate and says, we really want the Pizza Hut thing, mm -hmm. Dr. <laughs> Pepper says, yeah, we're all on board with that. <laughs> um, yeah. No, Aha. So I, I will spoil it. Um, so, uh, so basically he, he says, um, he says, I, I've been fortunate that it's only happened to me once. Um, and the one time it happened, I was doing a script where the story opens on a uh, on a ship, modern times, and uh, there's a captain up on like the bow of the ship, you know, looking out, and his first mate comes up with a um, um, with a mug of tea, and they're, they're British, and so he comes up with tea and offers him a cuppa, and they they drink as they're having their their conversation about you know whatever it is that sets up the you know, the plot of the, the episode. And... Does that look like an iceberg, sir? No, I don't think so. <laughs> It'll be jolly fine. Exactly. Um... This boat's unsinkable. No, good lord, no. <laughs> and a tea company was one of the sponsors, and they, I'm sorry, a coffee company was one of the sponsors, and contacted him and said, uh, uh... could you make this coffee instead? And he said, and I, I, I sat back and he said, initial response was, of course not. And he said, then I thought about it and I thought, okay, you know, here, he, how do I approach this kind of from, from a, a broader perspective? First off, um, is it being tea or coffee important to the plot? No. Okay. Um, being British... Is it reasonable for them to have tea? Yes. Being British, is it unreasonable for them to have coffee? No. Okay. Um, and he kind of went through all these various things, and he said, on balance, I wrote tea because they needed to have something in their hands while they're having this conversation. It did not matter one way or the other whether it was tea or coffee. So I went back and said, sure, we'll make a coffee. And they said, awesome, thank you so much. We'll never ask for anything again. And they never did. And so he said, you always have to ask yourself, is this being asked because for an unreasonable reason? Or, you know, is this something that can work into the story in a, or that, that doesn't matter to the story, right? If you're walking by right. and there's a you know, Coke sign in the background, so what, right? But right. if they're coming in right. to say, you know, they have to have a Coke can with the logo on its side pointing at the camera the entire, right? Like, that's a very different thing. Well, he was huh. in the pockets of a big T anyway. Clearly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the Tetley yeah. boys were outside mm. with truncheons right yeah. before. Well, that's one of the things he said. He said, I, he said, I've heard all these horror stories about, you know, companies just really strong arming him. And they said, he said, I just honestly haven't had that problem. He said, so, you know, probably if I had had that happen to me, I'd have a very different opinion about it, but I've just been lucky. So, you know, at least he was wow. open about that. Yeah, I would imagine terror at 20,000 feet. <laughs> TWA was not like <laughs> chomping at the bit to have Bill Shatner <laughs> fighting a gremlin on the wing. I'm pretty sure they were like, no, we don't really want that. <laughs> mm -hmm. And yeah. Am, do you guys want to buy onto this? No, no, no. Man, Am has no gremlins. Yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Pan Am weird. has never had a gremlin problem. Pan Am will never have a gremlin problem. <laughs> <laughs> Any stories are a gross mis misrepresentation of this company. Exactly. What? 